fitting for this car. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video, five common misconceptions about the smart car and specifically the electric drive. This comes up because I've had a number of comments in the comments section on the video where I, I uh, explain why we purchased this car, as well as just friends of mine have, um, have brought up, I don't know if I'd say concerns, but um, questions and uh, there's just misconceptions about this car. So I, uh, I'll start with the, the uh, most common comment that I get, and that is misconception number one by a wide margin. Isn't that an unsafe car? Uh, actually, no, uh, at least not as unsafe as you might think. So the, uh, this is a 2014 Smart Electric Drive, and um, this particular car has a four-star safety rating. So it is, um, now there are cars that are safer, but one thing that I want to explain, there's a, there's a bunch of different uh, facets to safety. Now, where this car is very safe is it is a very strong passenger cell. I remember when the, the gas version of this car first came out, I watched a documentary on the, uh, the crash testing and the, the design of this car, and it's essentially a big roll cage, a big roll hoop on each side, cross tied together with wheels at the corners. So it's very rugged. It's got four airbags, uh, driver side, passenger side, and then it's got side impact airbags. Uh, where this car is really very safe is cabin intrusion. So the offset head-on collision uh, tests on a lot of cars where the, the front tire would, would intrude into the passenger foot well and potentially break your legs. It's things like that that this car is very safe on. Uh, also, with the battery mounted under the floor, this particular car is safer than the gas version because the battery is mounted under the floor and that makes the center of gravity very low on this car. So it's not as unsafe as you might think. Also, there is, uh, there's the side of this that is the, the negative to the safety aspect of it, and that is that it is a lightweight car. It's, uh, I, I believe it's 1,800 pounds. It's less than 200 pounds, less than 2,000 pounds anyway. So it's a lightweight car. So let's say you have a car coming at you that has the same frontal impact four-star safety rating as this car, and you hit going the same speed, that car will win if it's bigger and heavier than this car, but with the same safety rating. And what I mean by that is this car having less mass will stop quicker, and if if you're being hit by a 4,000-pound car, you're the smart car will stop and then get pushed backward by that car. So the occupants will indeed feel more G-forces in an impact than the occupants in a heavier weight car hitting you would feel. So in that respect, yes, uh, this car could potentially be less safe just in that you could potentially be feeling more G-forces. But if you guys do a little bit of research and watch crash, crash testing of cars, from the 60s and 70s, you'll see that the, the front tires protrude into the, the foot wells with not even a, not a very uh, heavy impact. And uh, uh, passengers were, were hitting the dashboard and drivers were getting impaled by the steering column. And I mean, it was horrible. So this car is a far cry beyond the older, bigger, heavier cars in safety. So there's that. Uh, misconception number two, smart cars are unstable at speed. So I'm going 50 right now, and I'm going to back off back off a little ways here. I'm on a 55 mile per hour road. I'm going to back off a little ways so I can accelerate. So, okay, let's get going here. So there's 50, there's 60, plenty stable, not an issue at all. So. Uh, this car maxes out, I think, a little over 80 miles per hour. And I'll say this, that at about 70, it starts to feel a little a little bit nervous on the road. Not bad, not like unsafe, but it, 
above 70, it starts, you can feel the wheelbase, the short wheelbase, but even up at 60, not a problem whatsoever. The car is plenty stable. So, um, and again, being that this car is the electric version, the battery pack is under the floor, giving it a lower center of gravity and adding to that stability. So, no, there's not a problem traveling 60 miles an hour in the expressway, 60, 65. Again, above 70, you do start to feel a little bit, but, but not bad. So, miscon misconception number three is that smart cars are unreliable. That's really not the case. Uh, that, um, that misconception was, uh, was born out of the, uh, the gas version of these cars it has a, a transmission that shifts poorly. Now, I don't know that the transmission is in any way unreliable, but they are frowned upon by, uh, by a lot of automotive journalists because of how, how the transmission shifts uh, just very, very poorly. It, it, there's a big lag between each gear and that. And so people hear that the transmission, it's not a good transmission, and they, they assume it's unreliable, and then they project that, uh, that mindset to smart cars are unreliable. That is not true at all. Uh, actually, even the gas versions, my understanding is, are, are quite reliable. The electric cars are very reliable. I mean, I, I tried hunting around for known problems with the smart electric drives. They're just not really out there. I mean, you, you don't really see complaints about them. So, um, so that's a misconception. Misconception number four is somewhat related to misconception number three, and that is a lot of people assume that Smart is a standalone company that is, you know, autonomous and, and uh, that they're afraid of buying a car from such an unknown manufacturer. Well, that's really not the case at all. Smart is a subsidiary of Mercedes-Benz. So, so that's another common misconception that I hear people say, well, I would never buy a car from such a tiny manufacturer. Uh, but that's, again, that's not, uh, that's not a concern at all because uh, you know, these cars are supported by Mercedes. In fact, there is uh, a Mercedes dealership not far from us that has techs specifically trained for the smart electric drive car specifically. So should we have any issues that are beyond my capability of diagnosing, we would take it there. We've already researched that. Uh, so that's not a problem. And the last misconception, uh, there, I mean, there's plenty of them, but these are the top five that I hear. So misconception number five is that the, uh, these cars are short-lived. And again, I guess some of that can be related to the, the question of are they reliable or unreliable? Uh, but uh, if you go online and do some research, there are uh, there's a number of people. Well, the gas version of these cars, there's a bunch of people with 150 plus thousand miles on them. With the electric drive version, there are a, a handful of people out there with over 100,000 miles on them. And uh, there's one individual in the UK that has 120,000 miles, probably about 130,000 at this point. And he says, um, he doesn't give exact numbers, but he said that his battery capacity is in excess of 90% of what it was when it was new. That's probably just him charging to 100% and checking his range in miles. But he mentioned that he's still got well over 90% of his range on his car at 120,000 miles. And he's really had no problems to speak of. Uh, I, there's really not a lot to go wrong in these cars. So uh, it's... It is, uh, I'm not the least bit worried about it. This car has 32,000 miles on it. I am uh, fully expecting to not have any problems with this car at all in the probably 30 or 40,000 miles we plan to own it. That being said though, I could have just shot myself in the foot and jinxed myself and maybe we'll have problems with it now. But it is a misconception that these are unreliable cars. So now I'm gonna give you guys one bonus bit of information regarding uh, this car and that is that though it is light on features in many ways, particular car doesn't even have heated seats, but it is kind of uh, fascinating. There is a uh, USB port in the glove box. Uh, it's got auto windshield wipers, uh, and they work really well. They actually work way better than the Model 3 auto sensing wipers. They work great. It's got uh, automatic headlights. Uh, the um, you know the the radio sound quality is decent. I mean, it, it's not uh, 
it's not like this car has nothing in it. There, there are a few modern features to it. Uh, that being said, though, and I'll go through this. Uh, I'm going to be doing a full review of this car. This particular car, the sticker price was $26,700, I believe, which is insane. Way too much money for this car. As much as I love this car, it, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, that's an insane amount of money to be asking. So, uh, anyway, I think that's it. You know what? I'm going to give you a sixth misconception, uh, just as a bonus, and that is that driving this thing must be terrible. I gotta tell you, this car is a hoot to drive. It is hilarious. I mean, I <laughs> it is a lot of fun. It's it's tiny, so you can dart in and out of traffic. This thing has a turning radius. I swear you could shave the bark off a tree, you could turn so to, so sharp in this car. It is amazing. You could do a U-turn in even the smallest side streets. Amazing. Three-point turns are a thing of the past in this car, and it's relatively quick. 0 to 60 is roughly 10 seconds. I mean, I'll do V-Box testing, but 0 to 20, you don't get full power. And then above, like, 50, it tapers. But, say, 20 to 50, it's got some, some really good pull to it. So it's, it's a lot of fun to zip around town. So, yeah, another uh, common misconception is that they are not fun at all to drive. This thing is a blast. So, anyway, uh, that's it for today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I, again, I plan on doing a, a full review of this car, explaining all of the features, uh, explaining my, uh, my favorite aspects of the car, things that I like and don't like. I know I said that I was only going to give five misconceptions, and I went to six. I'm going to give you a seventh misconception. Seventh misconception is that you can't really carry anything in this car. For one thing, I'm 5'10", I have plenty of headroom, plenty of leg room, the seat still has room to move back, there's plenty of room, but behind the seat, I mean, if I reach way back, I can touch the window, but there are, um, there's a couple feet of room behind my back seat, behind the seat back, and if you fold the tailgate down, you open up the glass, fold the tailgate down, I measured it, it's three feet by three feet of loading floor. With the tailgate open, it's flat with the trunk floor, and they did that on purpose. You can carry a three foot by three foot by three foot box in the back of this thing, as long as you want to leave the tailgate open. So it's like a pickup truck in that respect. So uh, again, seventh misconception about this car is that you really can't carry anything in it. Uh, in fact, my wife and I are, uh, are pretty excited to um, to have this car because we'll occasionally pick up end tables and that from different places and we have no place to put it. We have no cars. All of our cars have trunks and this car will actually carry, I would say, larger things in that the aperture, the, the loading opening is larger than the, the trunk opening of any of our other cars. So anyway, I'm done. Maybe I'll do another video of more misconceptions, but there are five, six, seven misconceptions for you. Anyway. Thanks, guys, and uh, again, if you have any questions about the car, please let me know. Take it easy now. Bye-bye.